welcome back in today's video we are going to discuss about barrier methods objectives is to understand the various physical and chemical methods the physical methods will include condoms diaphragm and vaginal sponge these th uh, the classification is already dealt under the previous video wherein we dealt about the various methods of contraception it's just a revision so we see that uh, the condoms they are of two types male condom and female condom the second one is diaphragm which is also known as dutch cap and the vaginal sponge which is popularly under the trade name of today the chemical methods will include the foams jellies paste suppositories and soluble films so we can see that they are foams jellies paste suppositories and soluble films the each of these will be dealt in detail starting with the physical method that is condom under condom we had two things under condom we had we had male condom and female condom we had male condom and female condom let us start with the male condom male condom popularly known as nirodh so we see that the condom it is widely known and it is a most widely used barrier device by the males in india the trade name is known as nirodh what is the how did this uh, word condom originate the word condom in india the nirodh which is a sanskrit word which means prevention so we see that the condom nowadays it is uh, gaining a lot of attention because it is very effective simple spacing method of contraception it is in the first place very effective method the, it is used as a spacing method of contraception previous video we saw that we have two types one is spacing method and the other one was permanent method here condoms is used to used as a spacing method wherein the couple plans to space the children they plan to have a gap between the first kid and the second kid so we see that it is a spacing method it does not have any side effects it prevents the pregnancy so we see that it is used both by males and the females the female condoms next we'll be discussing so now let us see what are the advantages of these condoms advantage is that it provides the protection against the pelvic inflammatory diseases and sexually transmitted diseases it is very effective it is safe it is inexpensive we see that they are cheap they are also provided free by the indian government in the trade name of nirodh so we see that it is uh, providing us a protection against pid and std it is very safe it is inexpensive it does not have any side effects it is manufactured in trivandrum hindustan latex and in chennai under the london rubber industry so the trade name nirodh and uh, now the condom the, uh, there should not be a confusion between the male and the female condom we see that the female condoms are comparatively big and this is the open end of the condom and this is the closed end of the condom similarly the male condoms are comparatively small and this is the open end and that is the closed end of the condom and uh, the technique uh, the technique as described here um, the condom will be fitted on the erect penis before the intercourse it should be held carefully when uh, withdrawing it from the vagina so that you avoid the spilling of the seminal fluid into the vagina after intercourse uh, it is uh, like advised that a new condom should be used for each sexual act so what does the condom what is the role of this condom this condom will prevent the semen from being deposited in the vagina effectiveness is increased when we use it in conjugation with the spermicidal jellies which are inserted into the vagina before the intercourse so we see that the condoms when they are uh, used in conjugation along with spermicidal jellies when you use them it is highly effective method of contraception and also the surveys have reported that there is 2 to 3 per 100 women years and more than 14 in the typical users so we see that um, here they are talking about the failure rates 
so we know that the condoms which are made up of latex the very important point we studied the advantages disadvantages now let us discuss about this failure rate here they are saying that the failure rate is 2 to 40 per 100 women years what do they mean by 100 women years first you need to understand what is 100 women years suppose a couple is using one method of contraception for a period of one year so we see that uh, 100 couples 100 women or 100 couples 100 women or 100 couples are using one method of contraception one method of contraception for a period of one years uh, one year and in them how many of these 100 women uh, the contraception is failing and the pregnancy is referring it is known as the 100 women years so um, suppose 100 couples 100 couple or a woman are using condoms for one year for a period of one year in these hundred women how many women the condoms are failing and the pregnancy is occurring so we see that in 2 to 40 percent uh, hundred women year is observed in cases of condoms in cases of male condoms so what is the cause for this failure the cause for this failure is the incorrect incorrect usage is the most common cause so we see that the um, you the method the method of uh, using this condom is not proper so the incorrect method of usage is the cause for the failure of the condom remember guys the failure rate is 2 to 40 per 100 women years what did we understand per 100 women years is 100 women using a method of contraception for for one year in these 100 women how many women the contraception is failing and the pregnancy is occurring in cases of condom 2 to 40 percent the the uh, contraceptive method fails and pregnancy occurs now moving on uh, to the female condom the female condom uh, the female condoms is uh, made up of polyurethane which is used internally by the receptive partner so the female uh, uses the condom internally uh, whereas the male's condom it was externally here uh, it is inserted internally it is made up of polyurethane so we see that uh, this uh, female condoms will be pre-lubricated with the silicon hence a spermicidal jelly is not needed we don't have to use an additional spermicidal jelly because this uh, the female condoms they are manufactured in such a way that it is already pre-lubricated or already lubricated with the silicon it was invented by danish md lasse hassel okay not very important uh, invention and then the failure rate again guys what is 100 women years you need to know what is 100 women years each time when you revise it will be perfect what is 100 women years supposedly 100 women or couple are using a method one method of contraception uh, for a period of one year in them how many of them the contraception is failing and the pregnancy is occurring okay so we see that in 4 to 20 percent of the women the contraception fails and the pregnancy occurs 4 to 20 per 100 women years whereas in uh, male condoms what was the percentage guys in the male condom we saw that it was 2 to uh, 40 percent 2 to 40 percent in the 100 women years okay it is verify so we saw that 4 to 20 2 to 40 okay 2 to 40 in the male condom per 100 women years whereas in the female condoms 4 to 20 okay in the female condoms it is uh, less effective compared to the male condoms advantage it will provide us a protection against the hiv infections and stds it is the only tool for the hiv prevention that the women can initiate and control the three types of condoms are seen uh, observed the female condom which is made up of polyurethane and we have a female condom made up of nitrite polymer and a female condom made up of latex so we see that under female condom what what are the important points guys 
it is made up of polyurethane it will be pre lubricated with silicon we don't require any spermicidal jelly failure rate 2 to 20, 4 to 20 4 to 20 okay remember female 420 420 okay there it was 2 to 40 240 420 okay here 420 in males it is 2 to 40 percent now uh, it is less effective and advantages we saw hiv stds uh, and then three types the first one was made up of polyurethane and the other one nitrite polymer and the third one was latex so we see that the con uh, female condom uh, just like we uh, saw in the previous uh, slide the female condom this is the open end and this is the closed end it is comparatively bigger compared it is big compared to the male condoms this was the open end and this was the closed end both the condoms we have compared now let us see uh, how they are inserted the female condom the open end will be uh, left here uh, outside the vagina uh, then the closed end is inserted up until the cervix so we see that the female condoms insertion is given and the comparison so moving on to the second uh, barrier method so we are done with uh, phys under physical method so guys revise so physical methods under physical method we had condoms under condoms there is male condom and female condom and then physical method the second one is diaphragm so we'll be dealing about diaphragm now the diaphragm also known as dutch cap we saw that diaphragm a vaginal barrier which was invented by a german physician and it is popularly known as dutch cap okay it is made up of synthetic rubber or a plastic material so we see that this diaphragm which is made up of synthetic material or a plastic rubber you can see the picture here of the diaphragm which is made up of plastic or a synthetic material this diaphragm has to be uh, you know uh, inserted before the sexual intercourse and it has to be remain in the place for not less than six hours after the sexual intercourse you should not leave the diaphragm beyond six hours after sexual intercourse if this uh, like diaphragm is left there for an extended period we have something called as a toxic shock syndrome uh, developing because it acts as a foreign body and uh, the toxic shock syndrome or a peripheral shock syndrome requiring resuscitation will be developed in the individual so we see that this uh, diaphragm they are saying uh, it uh, it is uh, 6 to 12 per 100 women years 6 to 12 per 100 women years so again let us see what is 100 women years by now you are very familiar 100 couples practicing one method of contraception for a period of one year in them how many uh, women the contraception is failing and the pregnancy is occurring in cases of the diaphragm in 6 to 12 women out of these 100 women uh, the failure rate is seen in 6 to 12 women the pregnancy occurs it provides protection against uh, pid pelvic inflammatory diseases hpvs etc the disadvantage we saw that if it is extended beyond 24 hours there is toxic shock syndrome so initially what happens uh, it is uh, suggested that it has to be kept for 6 hours if it is exceeding beyond 6 hours reaching more than 24 hours then there is a possibility that the toxic shock syndrome could develop there are various variations in the diaphragms we also have vault cap so we can see the vault cap the sizes will differ the shape the vault cap vemule cap and the vemule cap is given here and then we have the cervical cap okay now uh, let us see the cervical cap and the diaphragm what is the difference and how they are inserted so we can first see the uh cervical cap here which is ex, uh, which is inserted up to the tip of the cervix here it is inserted until the tip of the cervix whereas this uh, diaphragm it is inserted um, at the tip also it is extending partly into the vagina so this uh, sizes will differ uh, this is the dutch cap or the diaphragm and here this is the cervical cap which is uh, just fitting the closed end of the cervix moving on to the 
third physical method so let us revise the physical methods again guys physical methods we have how many the condoms male and female then we studied about the diaphragm and now we are going to study about the sponge the sponge popular vaginal sponge okay the third one we are going to deal about starting with the a uh, vaginal sponge which is made up of polyurethane foam sponge so we see that it is a barrier device which has been used for hundred of years okay here what happens they soak the sponge in vinegar or olive oil and it is popularly under the trade name today what is the purpose of the sponge it is again to prevent the conception in the women to prevent the pregnancy starting with sponge we see that it is a small polyurethane foam sponge we can see the size it is a very small foam sponge which is made up of a polyurethane what is the measurement it is 5 cm into 2.5 cm we see that they are going to saturate the sponge with the spermicide how much of spermicide they are using 1000 mg of spermicide 1000 mg and very important the spermicide's name nonoxinol 9 okay nonoxinol 9 very important guys you have to remember in sponge the sponge the sponge it is popularly under the trade name today and what do they do this sponge will be soaked in olive oil or vinegar after soaking the sponge in olive oil or vinegar it will be saturated with the spermicide what is the name of the spermicide nonoxinol 9 so we see that this sponge is soaked in vinegar or olive oil then it is saturated with nonoxinol 9 spermicides then the it combines the barrier and spermicide method to prevent the conception so we see that it is a barrier method obviously but it is combined with the spermicide uh, spermicidal method and it is thereby preventing the conception the sponge sponges are inserted vaginally prior to the intercourse so we can see that the sponge is inserted the sponge has been inserted vaginally it has been inserted to prevent the conception it is done prior to the sexual intercourse it must be placed over the cervix so we can see that it has been placed over the cervix it must be left in the place for 6 hours after ejaculation after the sexual intercourse the sponge should be left inside the vagina for more than 6 hours if, uh, i'm sorry it should be placed for 6 hours the disadvantage if it is left for more than 6 hours exceeding 24 hours it will again lead to toxic shock syndrome just like in diaphragm guys don't uh, confuse always it should be less than Six hours, just for a period of six hours, it should be left. If it is exceeding beyond six hours, if it is exceeding beyond six hours or beyond twenty-four hours, there is a possibility of toxic shock syndrome. What is the failure rate we see per hundred women in Paris women? It is twenty to forty. In Nelly Paris, it is nine to twenty percent. So we know that it is twenty to. 40 in cases of paris women whereas in nulli paris women it is 9 to 20% per 100 women years if 100 women are using one method of contraception for a period of one year the possibility the failure rates and the resulting pregnancy is 20 to 40% in paris women 9 to 20% in nulli paris women so with this we complete uh, the chemical uh, the physical methods now we are moving on to the chemical methods under the chemical methods we see that uh, they are comprising of four categories we have four categories in them the first one is foams the foams they will complete uh, comprise of foam tablets we have foam uh, tablets will be there and also foam aerosols are also seen okay we also have aerosols next we have creams jellies and paste which are squeezed from the tube we we squeeze them from tubes and we have suppositories the suppositories will be inserted manually you are going to insert them 
the soluble films they are inserted manually the soluble films will be inserted manually these are the modern spermicides uh, which are uh, you know which are acting as a surface and uh, agents now we'll deal about it so we see that the foams containing of foam tablets and aerosols creams jellies paste which you uh, you know squeeze them from the tubes we have suppositories and soluble films you can see here the spermicidal foam and the films which are inserted manually and we have uh, inserts that is suppositories the jellies and the spermicidal jellies now we see that the mechanism of action of these uh, contraceptive method is they act as a surface active agent what do they do these uh, jellies or uh, the foam what it does it will go and attach themselves to the spermatozoa so this is the spermatozoa they will go they will attach themselves to the spermatozoa once they attach themselves to the spermatozoa they prevent the oxygen supply to these sperms resulting in the death of these sperms they will kill the sperms they will act as a surface uh, active agent they will prevent the oxygen supply and kill the sperms the disadvantage it will cause burning irritation tartogenic effect on the fetus so we also have certain other drawbacks we see that uh, this uh, spermicides must be immediately used before the sexual intercourse also they have to be repeated during each act they will cause uh, like uh, that uh, besides the messiness we also have the irritation burning there should be that uh, these uh, they have to be inserted into the regions of the vagina where the sperms will be deposited this is also a kind of drawback okay we can uh, some it, the sperms will be deposited deep inside the vagina so we see that uh, sometimes this spermicidal jelly does not reach that area so there is a high possibility of pregnancy and also we see that uh, there could be a carcinogenic effect on the vaginal skin or cervix we should make sure these spermicidal jellies which we are using should not have any carcinogenic effect and we uh, we have uh, come across that no spermicide which is safe to use has yet been uh, found and uh, they have to be used in conjugation with the barrier methods to be effective so with this uh, we complete the chemical methods the chemical methods is very small the foams creams jelly paste suppositories and soluble films so i hope uh, the barrier methods are clear uh, thank you if you like the video hit the hit the like button and subscribe